What can be better than enjoying your meal with a beautiful view for the African savanna? I literally don't know. In today's episode of the Desert Adventure Park, I will build a detailed restaurant with a unique interior and a terrace overlooking the savanna that we've built last time. This took me so long to build and I really hope you guys will enjoy it. Hello guys, this is Caesar Creates and welcome back to my channel! I am so happy because today we are finally back in the Desert Adventure Park and we'll build something a bit different for me. I cannot remember the last time when I had a Planet Zoo speed build video dedicated to something other than a zoo or an animal habitat. We have been adding a lot of animals lately and today we'll build something a bit different. We'll build a restaurant, a very detailed restaurant with a detailed interior and the outdoor sitting area for our guests. As I told you many times, I am not the best when it comes to those kinds of buildings. I prefer to build uh, buildings and habitats that's for animals. When it comes to guests, I, I'm i not an expert on those things. Uh, I think that every zoo needs a restaurant, needs uh, some guest areas like a gift shop and so on, but I just don't like building them and I don't like how those builds look when I do them. Uh, so oftentimes I'm simply a bit frustrated when I have a really nice habitat and next to it is a like semi nice guest building but this time i really decided to challenge myself and build something very detailed and let's say realistic so it took me so much time both doing my research so gathering a lot of inspiration for this uh, going through pinterest through a lot of photos of different zoo restaurants but also regular restaurants bars cafes and so on and of course building this and having so many attempts and trials. Let me tell you that this speed build here, before editing, before cutting out some footage, it had 2 hours and 2 minutes. So <laughs> I had 13 hours of recorded footage of building this restaurant and of course I wasn't recording all. Of course a lot of this was just figuring stuff out. Uh, I had several attempts on, uh, for example, building tables, chairs and other stuff like that. But but uh, yeah, I of course cut it out this footage because this video would be so long. I think it, like after cutting out, it is still one of my longest videos on YouTube. Uh, of course, not counting the tours that we had. I still hope you guys will watch it, will like it, and you will get a bit more time with me today. So. <laughs> hope that you are happy for this. Recording over 50 minutes of voiceover isn't the easiest thing, but I will try to do my best. I have my list of things that I want to talk with you guys. But first, let's talk about the restaurant, its positioning in the park and my plan, my initial plan for this restaurant and how I wanted it to look like. So in the last episode of this series of the Desert Adventure Park, we've built this massive uh, savanna habitat for different um, species of ungulates like the blue wildebeest, Nile lechway and so on. Uh, actually so many of you watched this video, uh, it had so many views so thank you for that, a lot of you enjoyed it. Uh, so today it's a little bit like a continuation, maybe not a continuation but the builds will be uh, a bit connected with each other. Uh, if you haven't seen the savanna builds, I will put the link down in the description and on the screen so you can watch Watch it but of course it is not necessary for you to watch it just to you know understand what we are doing here today so my initial plan something that I had in my head something what I wanted to build in here uh, was to build a restaurant that will have uh, the taras that will be overlooking the savanna habitat that we've built last time we'll actually build this taras but we'll build it at the end of the video first of all we'll build the actual restaurant I knew that I wanted 
wanted a round building because we had a lot of a lot of those round buildings like inspired by African hats in here with a thatch roof and so on. Typical African cliche stuff. Maybe not cliche, but you know what I mean. Actually, when you think about African theming, uh, you probably have those African hats in your head. Uh, so this was something that we went for in the African section uh, and something that I wanted to be very cohesive with when it comes to this entire area of the zoo. Uh, I said last time that the restaurant here uh, will be actually the last episode of this African section and after that we will have a tour. But I sort of changed my plans a bit because I want to squeeze in one more episode. I hope you guys don't mind because I actually uh, sort of found out that we have a very huge plaza, main plaza, like in the middle of this African section and I don't have like too many like ideas on how to fill it in uh, and I think that we can squeeze in there a little souvenir shop and I think that we'll build a souvenir shop again inspired by those African hats in the next video and then we'll have a tour of a finished African section of our zoo and after that we'll move on to another village oh I forgot that I'm actually calling those villages so the African village will be finished very soon to achieve this round shape of this huge restaurant building you guys could see me work with this mud pillar technique at the beginning of the video so I firstly did uh, one piece of wall uh, doing some things that we already did in the zoo so those like stripes and uh, different like blocks of color and this more like uh, I don't know natural colors that we are using for the buildings in here and then I copied this and then just copied it round and round and round till we had the finished round shape and after that it was time to add the thatch roof. Actually I caught myself not recording all of that because uh, as you guys could see those like poles or beams uh, like wooden beams that are sticking out of the roof they just magically appeared on the screen but I didn't record that and I also didn't record adding like a, a ceiling layer like underneath the touch so you have the plaster pieces in there so when I was rotating the roof it's right away you know did the entire ceiling inside so it was just a bit easier for me to do this those bo things both like the actual fudge and the ceiling inside for the building after that I move on to doing some windows like the skylights because of my experience of building in Planet Zoo I know that you need a bit of this natural light inside because otherwise things can look a bit more like uh, dark and gloomy and so on so I always try to add some more windows around the building or in the roof so we have more of this natural light inside. After that I added an entrance to the building I decided to build like an automatic sliding doors uh, I also did like windows uh, and the entrance to the terrace but I didn't like include this footage in here because I just had to make this video a bit shorter and it was just using the same things uh, using the same materials and building in the same way as building this sliding doors it was even easier so I am sure you guys will be able to figure it out uh, Delby is quite a bit like uh, cutting out you know jumping in this video uh, just because I wanted to keep it very like interesting still even though it's so long uh, if I'm doing something over and over again I would just keep it and also if I I felt like the camera movements inside of this uh, building like building some small things were too crazy I also decided to cut this out because it can get a bit dizzy while you are watching and I don't want that of course you will be able to see it all in the cinematic shots by the end of the video I will show you everything in detail my cinematic shots are a bit different nowadays because I am talking through most of them I think it is more interesting that way uh, and I saw that you guys really enjoyed it so uh, yeah I will continue doing that for sure in the future videos although it is a bit more work but I don't really mind. In a second I will start working on the interior and it was the hardest part for me. I am not good when it comes to interior in Planet Zoo but let me tell you that I did my best when it comes to this building. 
thing. Uh, I know that maybe I could have done a bit more work, like do a bit more detailing, a bit more like realistic stuff, like better ventilation and I don't know, cables, stuff like this. But I was building it for so long that when it came to some finishing touches, I just wanted to be done with it so much that I just was like, okay, I am done. I think it looks good. Uh, let's just finish it and let's upload the video this Saturday because I don't want to you guys to wait any longer for another video. While building this, I was really inspired by work of other very talented creators, much more talented than me when it comes to this stuff, like uh, Rembrandt Boy, like Josh, like, uh, for example, Haribo, Christina, uh, like Toves. Their work is mind-blowing every time, but uh, for me, especially the guest sections, like the restaurants, the, uh, I don't know, viewing galleries, uh, shops, and things like that, like information centers, those are the things that I am always so, so impressed about because I just cannot build like this. I don't have it in my skill set. And I really want to try and, you know, do better interiors. I wasn't, I didn't have much chance to build better interiors, to be honest, in Planet Zoo, because I focused on building habitats so much. My explanation for this was that I'm saving FPS for, uh, you know, firstly adding the animals and then doing stuff like restaurants and so on. But I don't know if it was the right choice because right now we have a huge Elm Hill City Zoo for example that has so many habitats but only has like two restaurants or even one proper restaurant that I've built very early on and it doesn't look good so when you walk through the zoo there you can clearly see that there's not too many like those guest facilities and I really want to add them uh, one day to the zoo to make it look more like realistic but their work really inspired me uh, I even downloaded some of the blueprints that they uh, added to the workshop uh, and I just you know went through them to kind of get in their mind mindset, see how everything is built, what they had in, on mind. I don't know if you guys know or ever used the Starbucks coffee building by Haribo, but it is so mind-blowing. I wish that I could build something like that, maybe one day, but who knows. Okay, but back to the build. Right now you can see me creating this custom wall decoration. Uh, it was inspired by one of the photos that I found uh, while I was looking for African restaurants on Pinterest. Let me just tell you that there is not much inspiration when it comes to the African restaurants actually, uh, because I feel like that the African restaurants are not that popular. There are not too many African restaurants. I think I've been to a Moroccan restaurant, but I never been to a restaurant that actually serves like typical African food. Uh, and that's quite interesting, right? Like Moroccan food is still African food, but I'm talking more about the Central African cuisine. I've never been to such a restaurant, so I had I had to find some inspiration online and there isn't too many of those places. Of course, there are restaurants like that, but not many of them had something that I was looking for, which was like more this like modern approach to the restaurant that have really nice nice interior like uh, you can see that they are clearly done by interior designers and they have really nice food in there like I'm not telling that restaurant without a nice interior cannot have a good food but you know what I'm talking about we have a lot of those more fancy restaurants right now that have amazing interior and of course probably they should have nice food this is not always the case but you know what I am <laughs> referring to so I found this design of the clay wall or a brick wall of made out of different shapes and uh, different like angles and very messily organized bricks that I really loved and I wanted to recreate that and I had several attempts because I really didn't like the pieces that I used before and but after I settled for those that you could see and I think that the final product looks really nice after that I will also like create this re like round uh, planter that will be in the middle of the restaurant and here I wanted to use those thin long like tiles little tiles that are really trendy right now in the interior design uh, and 
and uh, yeah, I was able to recreate them using those small timber pieces from that tropical pack and I think it looks phenomenal in the end. I had to have some sort of a support for this building, uh, like I felt like I'm not a constructor or an architect, but I think like a, such a huge roof should have some like support in the middle, not to collapse. So, so I decided to make something more interesting. I decided to hide this like column that would uh, like carry this entire roof uh, inside of a huge tree trunk. Uh, the tree would probably be fake and add a lot of like plants on it to make it look a bit more overgrown and to add a bit more greenery to this restaurant and in the end this is one of my favorite pieces in this restaurant I really like it later on I will even add a small elephant statue inside of it to make it look a bit more African uh, there was a time that I decided that it this restaurant simply needs a bit more theming and I added those things and not too many still I didn't want to make this restaurant look like some Thing out of the Disney world or anything. I wanted to make it look like more African inspired than full on, you know, African decor, African things. Uh, so you will clearly see a little bit of fudge here and there on the lamps, on the counter that we'll shortly build. Uh, you'll see some wooden uh, elements with this more like uh, dark wood that it will be in several places. And uh, yeah, some pots, some things. Things. Uh, that will make it look a bit more African, but it is not like fully on you know, African themed restaurant that is straight out of the Animal Kingdom in... Where is it? Somewhere near Orlando in Florida, right? So not, not that, but uh, something more like you'll see in regular, maybe slightly modern restaurant. So throughout my life, I observed that people divide into two groups, uh, just as, you know, cat lovers and dog lovers lovers. Uh, there are people who uh, like restaurants or even love them, love to go to restaurants. Of course, there are some freaks, restaurant freaks and people who just, you know, enjoy going from time to time. But there is a second group of people who hate going to restaurants and uh, like prefer to eat at home. And it is totally under understandable. I definitely belong to the first group and I am one of those people's people people's people one of those people people <laughs> who love I absolutely love to go to the restaurants like this whole experience for me is uh, something that I just love to share with my family, friends, and so on. Whenever I travel somewhere, uh, I'm often always preparing like a list of restaurants that I want to visit. Uh, not only like tourist attractions, but there are also restaurants that I need to go to. I am looking for inspiration on Instagram, on TikTok, and stuff like that. And then I am going, like, doing the reservations and going to restaurants just to. I feel like in restaurants you can really feel the vibe of a certain certain like uh, place that you are going to. Uh, I am not, of course, not talking about those tourist traps that you have in the near, like the main tourist attractions. Those places are really not the best when it comes to, you know, getting to know the culture of the place. And also the food there is not always the best. Uh, I try to go for like very good restaurants where you can clearly like eat something that is local uh, and, you know, see a lot of local people see see how they just you know act how they are we are so different like i don't have to describe it to you but in other parts of the world and even in europe and different countries people are totally different and for me it is so interesting every time so yeah i love to go to restaurants i often do you know those instagram stories uh, of course on my private instagram not caesar creates because i have sort of like both separate accounts uh like uh, recommend Ending people the restaurants that I've seen I've been to uh, so yeah I have a lot of friends who are also like this and we are sharing the uh, the restaurants from different places for example oh someone is going to Paris so I know I've been to Paris several years ago so I can give 
them some recommendations and yeah i just love restaurants and i also like really like the interior design in restaurants some of them are really so beautiful like uh, like pieces of art and then you have this wonderful food and atmosphere and i just love to sit in those places for like several hours just you know getting this atmosphere of this place like inside of me but i could talk about this for hours and this is not the purpose of this video of course here we are talking and building in planet zoo as you guys can see right now we are working on the counter of our restaurant uh, and this was inspired by one of the cafes actually uh, that i found on pinterest uh, using those tiles using like some uh, marble uh, or any other stone like uh, counters or the top of the counters i'm not really sure how it is called i incorporated there two uh, small like shop counters that we have in the game one with the french fries and one with some juices i think and uh, i am so glad that they were added with one of the updates because before we only had those big like shops like those cubes or boxes uh, and i wouldn't be able to build something like that with those so yeah they were just perfect and behind them i also added a regular restaurant the in-game restaurant because i wanted to have the kitchen of the restaurant visible from the restaurant so that the guests when they order their food they can see how it is being prepared it is still so weird for me that the actual vendors <laughs> they work in the kitchen of this restaurant that they didn't give them any like aprons or different uniforms but it is how it is <laughs> we just cannot do anything about this and for the restaurant in this game to be usable it has to be connected with the path and you can guys can clearly see that in here there's no room for this connection uh, so to trick the eye a bit and you know to work the, around this i decided to make the one of the toilets that we'll incorporate in here outside like it is it will be like an in-game toilet that there, there will be just you know a toilet door and it sort of will look like the guests will enter the toilet and then they will magically appear in the restaurant by the tables uh, i incorporated some of those in-game restaurant tables for the guests that they have somewhere somewhere to sit uh, so it actually will make our restaurant a bit more alive uh, because all other tables in here will be just made by me like custom made so they won't be usable in the game so i had to have the some way of the guests just getting inside there so they can sit by the tables unfortunately it works like this in planet zoo uh, of course the counters that we'll have in here the guests will just enter grab something and they, they will probably uh, go out because we won't have any of those in-game benches in here for them to sit at uh, because i didn't want to use those benches inside they didn't really look nice in here although i tried but i couldn't make it work uh, we'll just build our own tables and chairs and when it comes to all the tables and chairs and so on because i can see those questions incoming in the, in the comment sections down below will this be in the workshop yes it will be in the workshop but i decided to make it a bit different this time because i was afraid that you guys won't be able to place this properly because of the taras because of how it is incorporated with the actual habitats next to it that i decided to do like a prop set of this entire restaurant so we will find different tables chairs maybe this counter in here the planters uh, some other decorations that i've built in this big like package <laughs> that you will be able to download from the workshop like in the set i'll probably call it african african restaurant set or anything uh, and i will put the link down in the description i am very hopeful that i will have time to do it actually if not it will go live <laughs> like several days after this video will go live but i will do my best to try to you know uh, upload it while uh, this video will be uh, out on youtube so just check the description if it will be there it will be out <laughs> in the workshop if not it'll be out like somewhere in the near future as i said before uh, i skipped some parts when the camera moved like crazy uh, so for example i skipped like uh, doing or creating little cakes that i've put in this like little glass fridge or anything like this display box uh, for some cakes and uh, different cookies that uh, uh, that the guests can 
like order in here. Uh, this was very inspired by this cafe and this is something very inspired by different cafes that I've been to. I love cafes. Like <laughs> Again, I am <laughs> returning to the topic of restaurants, but I was really inspired here by my recent visit to Copenhagen uh, and in there I really explored a lot of those cafes because you guys have amazing cafes. I just love this concept so much. It is not so popular in my country, believe it or not. They are getting more and more, more popular. Those small little cute coffee shops when you just have coffee, tea and like cinnamon buns or anything like uh, some sweet things. Uh, I especially loved, I remember it was I think called Juno Cafe in Copenhagen. The cinnamon bun buns from this place. Oh my god. And all of those places have those like displays for their sweets. So uh, I wanted to build something like this and I think it looks so so good uh, when I actually completed it. You also can see me do this overhang over the entire counter with a little bit of fudge in there. Uh, I just wanted to make it look a bit more complete. I think it looks so much better with this. Another thing that I skipped because of crazy camera movements were doing those little cabinets or kitchen units like inside of the counter the place for storage, like some drawers and stuff uh, for, I don't know, dishes, like cutlery and stuff, uh, maybe also to collect money from our visitors uh, but uh, yeah you'll, uh, you'll see that all in the cinematics by the end. I also skipped decorating the actual kitchen. I did some additional things. I think I actually didn't skip adding some amazing amazing blueprints that you'll also be able to find in the description. I found this like amazing blueprint for if you are building a restaurant in Planet Zoo you should definitely use it because it looks so so realistic. Uh, I actually think that it really works like the actual look of the in-game restaurants when you add this inside. This is actually called custom shop equipment in the workshop which is the restaurant equipment not the shop but Okay, uh, but unwavering, so uh, I will put the link down in the description if you guys want to use it. I also used the blueprint of the coffee machine by Toves and his coffee uh, like set, coffee shop set, uh, because I really wanted to have a coffee machine in here and I didn't have a clue on how to build one, so <laughs> I just took it from the workshop and this one was amazing and it looks so good in here. I just changed the colors a little bit, uh, but yeah, this one is by Toves. I actually have so much more respect for the interior designers after building this because I sort of like you know I like interiors I'm quite in interested in interiors I know what is sort of trendy right now uh, I also know if I will be doing my flat over once again or I don't know just you know building a future house or anything how it will look like because uh, I have se like se several styles that I really love for example mid-century modern I think it's so so beautiful uh, but uh, like liking something and you know choosing from different inspiration is so much different than actually designing something and coming up with things and you know matching things to each other so everything looks good it is so much more like harder of course i am not talking here about all the rules and regulations that the restaurants needs to be adapted to because i don't know them <laughs> and uh, this restaurant in here is probably not a adapted to those because this would be just you know another step and another thing that I would have to research that I didn't quite have time to and I didn't want to do that and go so deep in this but they also need to know this and they need to like design something like like having in mind nice design and what their clients want and also at all those regulations so I have a mad respect for them. I'm sure that by now you guys really know why this video took me so long. There was a lot of small things, a lot of uh, small details that I had to do, such as, I don't know, shelves, counters and all that stuff. The kitchen uh, will also work on the tables and so on. Uh, in, the, in the second, I did several attempts, as I told you. But I also had, of course, my private life. Uh, it was a time for me, interesting.
increasingly of a lot of like different doctor appointments like dentists and stuff so of course uh, after work i had to do those things i am also attending the gym like again <laughs> another attempt but this time i am doing quite well like from the beginning of the year i am doing this quite regularly so, so keep your finger fingers crossed for me i already see some progress so i'm so proud of myself and that leads me to another topic and another reason why uh, this video took so long and why i haven't got too much time uh, and i don't have too much time lately uh, i sort of wanted to talk with you guys about this in my last elm hill city zoo video but i didn't have time but here we have quite a long video so i figured that this will be better and uh, my new pets my two new budgies before the story i will just quickly try to explain what will happen on the screen uh, so uh, i will finish the counter i will do like uh, main news in there i will do uh, some shelves for the cups that the guests can actually buy if they want to just like in starbucks for example uh, i will do like a fridge for the beverages like drinks that they can grab and go to the counter and buy them a little stand for some additional like snacks like chips or i like, know chocolates and stuff uh, and also i would do uh toilets like uh, implied toilets for them using amazing font by christina and some amazing like uh signs by sheepsy it will be all in the description if you would like to use them uh, and also i will do a trash bin and maybe i will start to work on the tables i will see how much this will take me because it is quite a long story uh, i basically saved two budgies from certain death and uh, i would love to share with you guys this story because i know that uh, a lot of you actually was were were very interested in that so yeah we are very <laughs> animal focused in here on my channel so having new animals at home is very exciting to me as you can probably imagine so the story begins actually at the beginning of the year uh, when i randomly started to get those parrot videos on tiktok you know tiktok if you start watching something it will just you know give you more and more of those videos uh, of course i don't know if i can mention the name of this platform here because youtube is weird but let's say that i don't mind uh, so i got so many of those videos i just love them because parrots are so like intelligent they can do tricks they can they are really bonding with humans so they really look for this animal like this uh connection with humans so i it is basically like a dog with with feathers and with wings a bit <laughs> of course they are a bit different but uh to me they really were like like flying dogs and i love dogs so i just love them and uh, yeah so i started to think about getting a parrot uh, of course i was like okay this is a huge commitment because they live long uh, you cannot like travel so much and stuff but yeah, yeah i was like like you know thinking about this but not doing any major decisions and this december it was a day before christmas actually uh, i went with my mom to uh, the our local like shopping mall uh, to do some last minute christmas shopping shopping and we went to the pet store because i had to buy some snacks for my dog and you know stuff like this and every time i am in a pet store that has animals of course i had to go through them i have to look at them uh, because i simply love animals this is my obsession so i had to go and look at cute hamsters birds and fishes and other things uh, so it's been a while since i've been actually to this shop uh, and i wasn't aware of the conditions that the animals are kept in there and oh my god so uh, i saw a very excited kid that was just you know poking his fingers inside of the cage of a small cage of the birds that were really like low on a low shelf the birds were cl clearly like terrified like the mother like took this child uh, i went to this cage it was like on the one of the lower shelves it was really small and inside of there there were two budgies and right away i could see that they are in a very very bad condition like really one of them had a lot of bald patches uh, like uh, it is it was bald on the head like on the belly uh, under the wings it was totally like bald in there missing a lot of feathers also something weird weird was 
with this with its beak uh, and the other one was really like breathing heavily maybe it was because of stress maybe because of something else but uh, the cage was small, they didn't have any enrichment, which is so important for pirates. They are so, so active, they need enrichment, they are so intelligent that they need to something to do, otherwise they can just die of depression, boredom and stuff because they just need it. It is so essential and I knew that because of the videos that I got like randomly on my TikTok. But I knew how budgies look, how they can look, how they look when they are say like healthy. And those two were looking very suspicious, like really bad. And the cage and it was quite dirty, like nothing in there. And yeah, I just felt so bad for those birds, like so, so bad. Uh, I of course went to the uh, to the lovely lady that was working in there. I asked if, if she knows if there's something going on with there or like, uh, are they long in this shop? And she said like, she's quite new here, but yeah, they are quite long in here because they are ugly and no one wants to buy them. Like th she really said ugly and was like, what? <laughs> so maybe you should try to, you know, do something like maybe take them to the vet or i don't know just do something to make their they make them look better so someone actually will make they take them to the to their home and stuff and yeah she said like she doesn't know much about birds and stuff and i was like oh my god i need to do something about this because i just cannot leave it like this i just cannot leave it like this because i was so feeling so bad for those birds and of course i did I just bought a cage and I bought them and I bought some necessary stuff and out of the Christmas last minute Christmas shopping I went out of the shopping mall with two budgies and a cage. I was not thinking much in this uh, in this particular moment you can say I know that some of you will probably be like, yeah, you should do your research before you buy an animal, you should do this and this, you should prepare your home, you should prepare yourself and stuff. I know about this, I know about this stuff. I keep a lot of animals in my home, I used to keep a lot of them in throughout my life. But it was sort of an emergency because I saw, especially this one that was missing a lot of feathers, there was clearly something wrong with this and it wouldn't survive. And believe me when I say that, Throughout all my Christmas, <laughs> I was just watching YouTube videos about budgies, I was uh, reading a lot of articles, after Christmas I was an uh, expert, <laughs> really, I watched so much stuff. Uh, actually, budgies YouTube is a certain thing, like, there's so many videos about them and they have so many views, like, uh, it was hard for me to like even imagine so many, such a big numbers on videos about birds. So the stuff that I wrote and the videos, they just reassured me that there is something clearly wrong with them. Uh, they were also really scared of everything, like really, they were just like wild birds like like closed in the cage in my house they were terrified of me of the movements everything was new to them i bought some toys for them and they didn't even know what they were they were afraid of them so i i'm guessing that they spent their whole lives in this in those small cages and this is so 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 sad, like really. It was Christmas, so I couldn't take them to the vet. I had to wait till the Christmas will be over and I had to find an avian vet, which is not so easy. You cannot take them just to uh, a regular vet that uh, deals with cats and dogs. You have to find a specialized uh, avian vet, uh, like at least in my country. And I was able to find a lady, a lovely lady that actually works in my local zoo, like during the several days in the week and like uh, in the evenings or she has like two days like it's not, an irrelevant but uh, she is also doing those private uh, stuff that you can take your birds to her and she's treating them so uh, i she did an appointment i went i had to catch them which was also very stress stressful and i took them to her. I forgot to mention that the lady at the shop actually told me that those are two females and from the descriptions I had some mixed feelings but I thought that maybe they had some documents or anything that's why they she said that there are two females and I actually called them Grace and Frankie from the Netflix show I don't know if you know it but those are two very lovely older ladies and I don't know those <laughs> two sort of like reminded me of them uh, one is a bit more like cookie and one is more elegant so 
so <laughs> it was perfect. And uh, yeah, right away the vet said that they are two boys, so uh, my names were not working anymore. They stayed this way, they're Gracie and Frankie, I don't have any problems with that, that <laughs> they're males. Uh, but yeah, right away she said, oh my god, they are in such a bad condition, she haven't seen pirates in s such a bad conditions for a long time, and she said that they probably wouldn't survive one more month or two more months in this shop, so I basically saved their life. She even thanked me and she got a bit like emotional that she said that she's so happy that there are still good people on this world who would do something like this and who would buy clearly sick animals just to help them. Uh, so yeah, I was also like, don't cry, don't cry <laughs> in, this, in this place, but, but yeah, firstly, she examined them and uh, what she found out is that they are extremely underweight. They were something about 16 grams and they should be over 30, so it was half the the way that they should be. One of them is really young, is like a bit like six or seven months old, so it is a very young bird that probably spent its entire life in a tiny cage without any enrichment, which is so sad. And they had a lot of different parasites on them, like they had those little like mites, lices, the things that eat their their feathers, the things that those are like called the scaly mites, those are the things that grow on their beaks, uh, and they can even be so, like they can grow so much that they can prevent them from breathing correctly, so it is very like uh, crucial to, you know, so help this birds because it can slowly lead to its death. Uh, they also had some liver condition. Uh, they had because of poor diet, of course. There was a lot of like shortages of all the vitamins, minerals, everything. Their feathers looks like terrible. Like I am not surprised that nobody wanted to buy them because all the guides, all the like uh, guidebooks, everything. It's it, they tell you the things to look in a perfect budget when you go to the shop, uh, which is to buy and which ones to not not to buy because they might have some issues and those were those with all the things like listed on the not to buy list like really and you know what the saddest thing is about this even though I saved them, because of course she gave them a lot of medication, uh, she gave me a lot of medication to give them at home, she told me how to change their diet, because birds, sh like budgies, shouldn't be on an all seed diet like they were fed in this shop, because uh, seeds are very fat, uh, they, are, they don't have many nutrients in there, so it's for, they're of course tasty for the birds, so it's a bit like eating McDonald's for us. Like you get really tasty food that is really fat and really not healthy for you. Uh, and I should, I have to switch them to different like pellets and fruits and stuff. They didn't know what, uh, like for example, any other food is besides of the uh, of the seeds. So I had to teach them to eat the the different things, like for example, carrots, like uh, apples, like uh, lettuce. They are eating it right now, but before they were afraid of it so it was a journey i don't even want to mention how much money it actually costs me to treat them it took four vet visits avian vets are more expensive than the regular vets the medicine stuff i should i could buy like i don't know 20 or 30 budgies for this but i was determined to save them but what i wanted to say is that it is so sad because i am fully aware and this is probably something that you guys thought about uh, that they are probably replaced by other birds in this shop and this is this whole dilemma should i just leave them there for a certain death or should I buy them and be aware fully that they will be soon replaced and other birds will end up probably like them? And yeah, this is just so sad. It made me realize how bad this whole pet store thing industry is. Like uh, selling those animals just for profits and not caring about the welfare at all. Like I started to read about things that people had to go for, through like where, while working in those pet shops, how many of dead animals they had to throw away and so, stuff like that. It is simply terrible. And right now I am a huge advocate that the pet shops, shops shouldn't be allowed to sell uh, animals, like live animals. 
uh, we should be able to buy those in the specialized breeding places, not the pet shops, because clearly pet shops, at least in my country, the people who work there, they don't have to have any knowledge about animals. Uh, they have maybe some like, you know, basic, but they don't know, they don't, they cannot even see that they're like clearly unwell, which is so, so sad. Or the owners of the chains of the big pet stores should be obliged to train their work, their, their staff in animal welfare, like diseases and how to properly care for them. But it really depends on a human and how they will approach those animals. Uh, for some, work is just work. For some, work is passion. Uh, so yeah, it's really like I am a strong advocate that pets shouldn't be sold after this experience like oh my god it was a long right now they are much better uh, I haven't like talked about this for some time because I wasn't sure that they will survive especially the one that had a lot of bold patches it was in very bad condition so I didn't want to do have a huge announcement on here in here or anywhere that oh I have a badges right now and week after this one of them will be just gone because of all the diseases but uh, like happily they are all fine then they, they are slowly adapting to me they started to sit on my hand for example i'll try to include some footage of my badges in here during the story so you can see this uh, so we are doing progress they are still a bit afraid of everything new they are still afraid of humans but we are doing slow progress i'm still a bit afraid of letting them out of their cage i of course bought a huge cage like a flight cage for them like the one that is recommended uh, the one from the pet store is already somewhere in my basement <laughs> but but this obviously takes me some time to train them to care for them and so on so uh, i am taking some time after work to care for them like train with them and stuff uh, so that's why i would try to not make the videos affected by it but sometimes uh, uh, the badges just take too much of my time so yeah right now i have a dog i have a miniature dash hound i have two tanks with one with uh, bigger fish like cichlids, one with tiny fish and uh, cherry shrimps, uh, and I have two budgies. Uh, so my collection is growing. I don't know if I want any more animals because those ones take quite a lot of my time. I really don't have time to be bored right now, but I quite like it, so uh, it's all fine. Okay, so while I was talking about my lovely two boys, Grace and Frankie, <laughs> we are like fully accepting in here. I did some things, so I started to work on the tables and on our chairs and all, for example, those visual blocks or var barriers that you guys can see. Uh, I created some like custom tables, uh, lower and like bit higher ones. Uh, I also incorporated those uh, in-game restaurant t tables and uh, like seats, like booths. Uh, and I added like, little planters to them. Uh, so they are more like fitting into this style. My huge discovery <laughs> in this video were the signs, the signs that you can edit in the game so you can add some custom like words or captions uh, those ones that you can edit uh, they have some amazing textures on their backs so i was using a lot of those in here i especially love the one that i used for the planter uh, for those booths and also for some tables it looks so amazing i don't know why i wasn't using it before it is from the base game so it was there all the time but this texture of the wood might be my favorite in the game right now i just love it so much it looks so so realistic i also did those visual barriers like using the uh, different uh, planks tilted in different directions i also had this inspiration from one of the african restaurants that i found i added some cushions to make it look a bit more cozy and i created several of my designs of the lumps for this place i really wanted to make it look a bit more like less organized and a bit more african with those lumps that i will add in here i will do several designs using the small fudge pieces from the o oceania pack uh, and the uh, like baskets and stuff like that and i will mix those lumps throughout the whole building i actually didn't 
record the adding one of the lamps that will uh, be uh, next to the counter and that will just you know light put the light I don't know shine on the counter and all the entrance area uh, those like smaller like spot lamps uh, but I will show you them in the cinematics by the end of the video those lamps will also be in the workshop I plan to add this to this uh, restaurant set building an African building like inspired by an African culture actually made me realize how much the African culture is underrepresented in the everyday like media at least in the place where I live or I think that most places in Europe and USA we don't know much about the African culture as much as we know about the European countries and the USA Canada places like this also Asian cultures have a really like well-known cultures that are in the mainstream but the African is not so much uh, I know that it probably comes from the those countries being a bit le less developed but I think that the culture in there is just so fascinating and I was so glad to build something inspired by it. As you guys can see, I already started to work on a terrace. It is a place where I would probably sit if I will be eating at this restaurant because I would like to have this wonderful view about, for the animals. Uh, I know that the smells in there probably wouldn't be too good. <laughs> uh, I am fully aware, but if you don't mind this, uh, definitely this will be the perfect place to sit and to have your meal. In there, I also did a mixture of both the in-game uh, tables and the custom tables. I'll add some umbrellas for the shade and, you know, do things like barriers, some planters, uh, just to make it look nice and cozy. Uh, and after this, the whole restaurant will be done. Besides the stuff that I did, like next to the entrance to the restaurant, there will also be some tables there. Uh, else, like, I don't know, garden with this entrance to the toilet that I mentioned before. Uh, so this is something that you will also see in the cinematic shots by the end. I also added some vents and chimneys on the roof to make it look a bit more realistic. And that's basically all. I really hope you guys enjoyed it, especially that it took me so much time and work and effort to build this. I really would appreciate if you could click that like button down below for all the effort. This was something really out of my comfort zone, but I am quite happy with the final product. Maybe it could be a bit more detailed, but I am fine with the thing that I've built. When it comes to Planet Zoo, we should probably get some news about the DLC quite soon, I think, probably this month. I am actually having my uh, little vacation this month. I am going for a little ski trip or more snowboarding because I am riding on snowboards uh, to Austria. I cannot wait, but I really hope that the news of the DLC won't, you know, be announced or the DLC won't be released when I'll be there. I'll try to pre-record some, some videos for you guys, but I'm not sure if I will be able to do that. But just to let you know that I'll be absent throughout the one week of March. My next video will actually be one from the Jurassic World Evolution 2, finally! Uh, and then we'll have a new episode of the Elm Hill City Zoo, we'll continue working on the reptile house, so I hope you guys are excited for this! I really cannot wait to finish the reptile house so we can have the updates tour of the Elm Hill City Zoo. I promise you guys the tour as soon as we'll finish the reptile house and, and I'll keep my promise. Okay, this is all when it comes to the speedball part, let's meet for some cinematic shots in a second. I'm not gonna lie, I am quite happy that I am finally done with this restaurant. It took so much time, but of course I am happy with what I was able to achieve. I just love this terrace. I think that the guests will have a blast eating their meal while watching those beautiful animals roaming on their big savanna habitat. Adding a water section in a previous video in this particular place near the restaurant was a really good idea because animals are spending a lot of time near the restaurant, which of course will make the views from it even better. But the interior of this building was something that took me so much time to build, figuring out how I want it to look, building all those small little pieces, details and objects, uh, building tables, chairs took so much time. And I am quite 
quite proud of myself for pulling this off because I think that the interior looks quite good. I didn't want to go too overboard with the African theming, I still wanted the restaurant to look modern and I think that in the end I was able to achieve that. We have some African accents but they are not so dominant in here. What I forgot to mention in the speed build part is that I created my own custom menus for the restaurant in Canva and I came up with the idea that this restaurant will have an African dish of the day and today we have a jollof rice. This dish originated in Nigeria and is also popular in Ghana, Senegal and other African countries. I love the mixture of different tables and chairs, I think it added a lot of character to this interior and I also love the fact that you can see the inside of the kitchen because it makes the whole restaurant a bit more alive because there's always a lot of things going on in the kitchen. This of course is a self-service restaurant so the guests will order their food at the counter, they will pick up the food with a tray and then you know take the tray to their table, eat their food and go with the tray to the trash bin and <laughs> this was something that I had in mind while building this restaurant. Uh, to make it work I even had to create my own trays that I created using some pots from the uh, Euro pack and I think that in the end they look quite realistic. I kind of wish that we had a bit more like light and sun inside of this building but it still looks quite good. Here is a look on the restaurant from up above so we can see where is it positioned in our African village and this is time to say my goodbyes. But don't go anywhere because the cinematic shots will continue after I will be done talking. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Give this video a big thumbs up down below if you enjoyed it, ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video and of course leave me a nice comment down below, tell me what you think about this build. If you'd like to support the channel a little bit extra, you can do it with the join button down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!